Three times before you felt the terror, known the madness, lived the horror, but this is the one you've been screaming for. Here's your look at the NECA Toys Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter, reissue Jason Voorhees. After his revival in a hospital morgue, the hockey mask murderer fixes his vengeful attention on the Jarvis family and a group of carefree teenagers. Young Tommy Jarvis is aficionado of horror films with a special talent for masks and makeup effects. Has the diabolical Jason finally met his match? Before we take a trip back to Camp Crystal Lake, ill-advised, of course, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the reissue Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter Jason Voorhees actually is. We're also going to do some comparisons with this one and the previously looked at Jason Voorhees, because I know, of course, over the years we've looked at this figure several times already. The figure stands 7.4 inches in height. We can switch that to centimeters, revealing that reissue Jason from Part 4 is 18.8, is a little over 18 and a half centimeters tall. And the review here of Jason Voorhees, by the way, couldn't have been made possible without viewer Morgan and Chase taking the time, picking this up and sending it my way. Now, of course, the difficulty of ordering Jason's online, whether it be eBay, whether it be other online sites, is that you never really know whether they're just simply selling old stock that they couldn't get rid of or if they're actually selling reissues. I have seen some websites actually put in their descriptions or in the names, in brackets, they usually put the word reissue. And that way you know at least you're gonna be getting the most recently released Jason Voorhees. You can also even ask the seller as well if there's a date marked anywhere on the box to kind of give you an indicator as to which Jason you're actually getting. By the way, if you'd also like to check out some of uh, Morgan's work over on Instagram, you can follow. He does some incredible figure dioramas. Be sure to check out Macabre Custom Builds. Don't worry, I'll provide the link down below in the video description. As I said, though, I've had a look at Jason Voorhees, Voorhees, whether it be three, four, six, or even two. I've had a look at all those figures countless times already. But what makes this one such the exception to the rule is the fact that this is the reissue Jason Voorhees with the much updated, much appreciated paint job to not only the figure, but also the mask as well. To give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to move over the reissue Jason Voorhees. I'm going to bring in the original Jason Voorhees. And it's not really until you put the two side to side that you do notice there is a considerable change of pace when it comes to the paint applications. That mask specifically is the real, real calling card to tell you guys which Jason you're picking up. The brandished warway area on the nose is basically the telltale sign that you're picking up the reissue Jason Voorhees and not simply just old stock that a store is trying to clear out. You can also see as well when it comes to the shirt and the pants that there is a considerable change of paint from the reissue to the original one that we had gotten before. And of course, I'm going to do my very best to make this video worth your while if you've already seen me review the part four Jason Voorhees, because I think I probably reviewed him maybe about two times already. But this one does have some changes. And of course, we're going to go through each of the accessories first, and I'll show you how the accessories stack up compare up with the one that we had gotten before. Starting first with the Pamela Voorhees tombstone. Of course, this is one showing 1930 to 1979 with at rest listed down below. And this is all sculpted in there. It's not simply just painted in place. As the first of our many comparisons, I'll bring in the tombstone that we had a look at when we first had a look at Jason Voorhees, the original released part four, Jason Voorhees. Yeah, you can see there is some considerable difference in paint. In a way, you know, when you're looking at this, of course, this is supposed to look like stone. In a way, I actually kind of like the marbling and the, the splattered on paint. I think a little bit more on the original release versus this one right here. They have refined, certainly, when it comes to the paint applications. It looks a little bit more, well, smaller, especially when we spin it around. You can definitely see there's a lot more texturing. There's a lot more of this paint splattered on the original one that the newest one doesn't get quite as much of it. Now, you may actually just enjoy the fact that the tombstone has a whole lot less paint splattered on it. There's still the little spots of black added there, 
but it's not to the extent that we've got with the original release. Again, it's just more of a matter of preference than anything else. I may find myself even just handpicking which one I think is the better of the two and displaying my figure as such. So that's the tombstone he comes included with. We'll put that to the side, the other one. Uh, so let's see what else we can go through. He comes included with the hacksaw. Very, very cool. You can see he uses that at the beginning morgue scene. I think he actually kills Axel with that, if memory serves me correctly. And I also just want to reach off to the side. You think you would, I would have these actually more easier to get access to. But you can see there's the original one. I almost think like the paint's a little bit better on the actual blade part of the original hacksaw, but I think the blood is a lot better on the newer released. If you look at the two handles, I think the paint work on the newer hacksaw is a little bit better and cleaner than this one right here. This one is a little bit too silver for my liking, but yet I do think that the blade looks translates a little bit better on the original release, though I think the blood is much far superior on the newer hacksaw versus the original hacksaw. Put that to the side. He also comes included with his axe. And again, really the opener of this review, looking at the accessories, is more so just a comparing of one to the other. This is the axe that we get with the reissue Jason Voorhees. Again, reaching off to the side. Here is the axe that we got with the original release. Much lighter coloring for the handle on the new re released axe versus the original one. Again, it's just a matter of preference. I kind of think that the metallic works a little bit better on this axe, although I think it's applied a lot better on the reissue. It doesn't look like very obvious brush strokes. When you look at this one right here, it really does look like you can see the brush strokes of that silver added across the head, whereas this one is a much better applied paint. So again, there's benefits, there's pros, there's cons to looking at both of these. Comes, of course, with his trusty machete. I almost dropped it there for a second. Comes included with the machete. Now, you can see the way that they've painted this. It's, in, it's rather interesting. For starters, the blood is a much lighter color. And the way that they've streaked it across the blade, obviously, is to look like he's been impaling and stabbing people and drawing the blade back out. It's the same sculpted piece. I want to stress all of these. Like None of these accessories seem to be a case where they've re-sculpted these. Like when you look at the machetes, they're clearly the exact same mold. Just, you could say the paint's a little bit more superior. Like if you look at the original machete, this is the one that we got with the first released Jason Voorhees. And they have released Jason Voorhees a couple of times over the years. Uh, it's a much darker burgundy color. And it kind of just comes across more like it's dry blood. Whereas I feel like this one, it's a slightly lighter shade of red. And again, you've kind of got more of those streaks across the surface of the blade. Um, he comes also included with the corkscrew. Anybody see the corkscrew? There it is right there. Nice silver applied to not only the sides of the corkscrew. I must have at least three or four of these, I think, in my drawer. I feel like every one of them has a little cork I still have yet to remove from it. Nice looking corkscrew. Again, we'll pull to the one to the side, compare the two. I don't really think that there's as much difference when you look at the two corkscrews side to side. Although, you know, when I'm looking at it, it could just be my eyes playing tricks on me, but I feel like the paint's applied much better on the original release, which is this one right here, versus this one right here. I almost feel like there's a little bit too much silver caked on the top handle of the corkscrew, the part that, of course, you twist. But again, like putting the two side by side... I feel like in a case like this, the original corkscrew wins it for me. I'll just show you guys the, the bottom corkscrew end of it. Yeah, I do think I like the red a little bit more on the original release versus the new one that we get with this release. Put that to the side. Comes in clue with a knife. Stress the apologies in all of this. The fact that I know we've covered this territory so often before. Got the darker coloring of the red there on the blade, and again, reaching off to the original knife. It's again a case where they're really changing up the coloring of the blood, and I think the blood works better in many of the cases on the newer release versus the older release. Like, the handles are the same. Um, ironically enough, when you look at the two, they painted the little riveted areas there of the handle. Of course, the two halves of the plastic folded over the metal, lot cleaner here up here on the original release the reissue as you can see didn't do that they didn't paint that in 
a little messier on this side as well. You could maybe award points in this case to the original knife, but I think I like the blood just a little bit more on the reissue. And last but certainly not least, he comes in clear with a cleaver. No, no, not Mrs. Cleaver. You can see on the side there, the way that the handle is, it kind of looks like it's been wrapped. Go ahead and grab the one from the before. Look at the two handles. You know, again, I almost really have to say the same thing. I sound like almost a broken record. But looking at the two, this is the new this is the original one. This is the newest one. The blood, I will say, looks a lot nicer, looks more realistic as blood on the newer cleaver. But I will say, like the handles look a lot better polished on the original release. I just I like the blood on this one. I think the blood looks superior on the newer release. So again, better handle on the older one better blood applied, I feel, for the newer release. And last but certainly not least, when it comes to his accessories, just before we get down to looking at the head sculpts, is the two variations of hands. Now, this is the hand that came included with the original release. This is the one that we get with the newer release. It's definitely a very different change of color than the brown that they used. It kind of looks like on the original release that this looks like something that would belong to the Ninja Turtle Splinter, Really, really dark, grimy looking colored skin. This one is, I think, a little bit more realistic. But again, it's more pre preference than anything else. I think the brown works a little bit better. Because again, this is supposed to be still flesh tone. Just really covered in blood, grime, guts, and all that other fun stuff. I think perhaps in this case, the original release, which is this one right here, I think is a little too dark. Comes across not even quite human. Comes across like it's almost like Wolfman hands. So those are the two difference in hands there. Okay, so those are your those are all the accessories short of the heads. We'll just kind of move those to the side. And let's have a look at Jason Voorhees. Now again, I want to bring in the original release one, the original release Jason Voorhees, so that you guys can see the difference between the two. Uh, of course, we'll get to closer proximity. We'll compare the two a little bit more closer so you guys can see the real drastic change, the difference between the two is definitely the mask. Now, if you are going to, say, a toy show, some place where the seller is just simply selling stock of of uh, Michael of Jason Voorhees, I was going to say Michael Myers, when you look at the two, they're really the calling card. The one that you instantly know is the reissue. You can see has the more worn away area on the bridge of the nose, where the original Jason Voorhees didn't have that. Some would actually like this a little bit more because it doesn't have that wear away area. But I must say, that worn away painted area in gray really does enhance the overall look at the mask. It does also have like that crack that we noticed here on the side on this one. It's not as obvious here on this particular mask. Of course, you've still got the marking left behind from part three along the top area there. But I think like it works and translates a little bit better on the newer mask versus this one. I can't help but also think like the mask fits the face a little bit better on the reissue than this one does right here. Also too, I mean, when you're looking at the bodies between the two, even though the coloring is very similar between the reissue and the original Jason Voorhees, I will say that it's not until you hold the two side to side that you notice that the original Jason Voorhees, his shirt looked awfully wet. You can see that they really added a, a, a bit of a sheen to the paint. Whereas the reissue goes more the approach of a matte finish. I think between the two, the reissue on the shirt looks a lot better. Um, granted, this one does have what looks to be almost like blood. And just like residual remains of somebody left on his shirt. This Jason's shirt is a little on the cleaner side. Then we can move down to his legs. One thing again, I will commend the reissue for having is a more greater contrast of colors. When you're looking at this one, really all the browns and the reds sort of blend in with the coloring of his legs, and it just sort of looks muddy, and you really can't pick out one stain from the next. Here, at least, with the reissue, you can definitely see there's a lot more red, and it's separate from the coloring of his legs. You can really individually pinpoint, yes, that's blood. Ooh, that's mud right there. Whereas I feel like you couldn't get as much of that when you're looking at the original release. The original release sort of just blended all the colors a little bit more so in. But I do like the starker contrast on the legs on this one. Then, of course, we can have a look at the feet. 
not really much different between the feet. This one comes across a little bit more. If we look at it cl close here, you can see how they sort of just sponged on the other coloring. It's sort of a brown shoe or somewhat a black shoe, I suppose. And you've got the brown sort of sponged on top of that. Whereas if you look at the reissue, I think it's a little bit more gradual. So overall, I think like when you're looking at the two, while some of the accessories could be debatable where you would think that the original Jason may have had better looking accessories, I do think definitely picking up the uh, reissue Jason, you definitely get a much better looking figure, I think, if you ask me. It's the exact same mold. There's nothing changed between the two. The head sculpts are the same. The torsos are the same. And of course, the legs are the same. The only thing that's different is the diff different paint that they've applied. Now we're going to go ahead and just put this figure down for a second. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at the original release because, of course, we've already covered territory on that several times already. But I'm going to go ahead and remove the mask. At its time, for what it was, it's not a bad looking mask, but it does have somewhat an unfinished look to it. And again, you kind of got these little lines of plastic that have been added to the surface of it. But for what it was, at its time, it wasn't a bad, bad mask at all. In fact, I would still say Part 4 Jason is one of my personal favorite Jasons that NECA Toys have put out. But that is the removed mask. Now, I'm going to put this Jason down here for a second. We'll do comparisons between the two head sculpts uh, in a second as well. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this mask very carefully. You will want to be careful still. They haven't fixed the problem. Well, it's an unfixable problem, really, when you think about it, because the strap of the plastic is going to be naturally thinner anyways. But I've always had an issue where, like, the strap where it attaches to the top of the mask always seems to get freed, especially right here. We'll be careful when it comes to removing the mask. There we go. I'm gonna put this figure down here for a second. And we'll do comparisons with the two head sculpts in a second as well. But I want to show you guys the difference between the masks. Some of you may not even see the difference. I would hope that you would. I mean, again, the biggest one being the fact that they did have the gray added to the bridge of the nose, where obviously this one doesn't have it. But I feel like it's a much more refined looking sculpting of mask. It could very well be the exact same mask and just simply by the plastic that they're using. Like I've noticed like the plastic on the reissue feels like, well, I mean, you can do this with the original mask. It's somewhat softer plastic. I feel like I can't do that as much with the reissue. And maybe that's one of the reasonings why perhaps, even though it's the same sculpt mask, while, may, while maybe it, that's the reasoning why it holds its form a little bit better. So paint definitely is a lot better. I want to make sure, of course, I put the right mask on the right head. I'm going to put that to the side as well. And we'll go ahead and pick the figures up so you guys can see what the unmasked portraits actually look like. Now, it doesn't seem like much does change between the two. I feel, if anything, they're probably using the exact same head sculpts again. But I think it's that very subtle of change of color where I think you get a more consistent blending of paint on the newer release, this one right here, versus the original release. It could simply also be my eyes playing tricks on me. Let's not have them holding hands. It could be my eyes playing tricks on me, but I don't feel like he has as much detailing on the side of his face as the original one has. But I think it all boils down to the fact that they used the paint. Like there's a lot of additional colors that they used for this one. And resulting in that, I feel like some of the details get almost lost in his face because there's just so much unnecessary coloring added. Whereas the newer release, the reissue, kind of tones that down a bit. They keep the coloring and the additional paint added to where it should be, primarily the wound along the top of his head. Whereas I feel like this one did add a whole lot of additional darker shadowing around the eyes, darker coloring around the lips. Pulling it back ever so slightly, I do think you get a better looking head sculpt, unmasked, when you look at the two heads side to side. The next thing we'll compare is the alternate head sculpts, because like the original release, the reissue also gets a swappable head, and these are the ones I'm currently holding in my hand. If you look at just the masks alone, you can see with the original release, there's a lot more of additional coloring that I feel was unnecessarily applied to the surface of the plastic. This one still has it though on their reissue, but I feel it's a little bit more controlled, a little bit more precise, and they're only targeting some areas of the mask. So I feel like this is just basically painted across the whole surface of the plastic. Again, the head shape of the mask is one thing that stands out to me. 
Again, it could be just the fact that they're using a denser material plastic for this head sculpt here, but I do feel like it holds its shape and it looks a little bit more appropriate to the shape of the mask that he has in the movie. Let's go ahead and remove the masks for this one now. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off. This one has obviously the big gash located on the side of his face. A considerable gash that obviously if you have yourself the machete, let's go ahead and grab that right now. The machete, I almost dropped it. The machete you can actually take and lodge into the side of his head, just like that. Not really the preferred way of displaying the figure from my house, but if you do like the idea of displaying Jason sliding down on the blade of the machete, boy, that does ever look really good and effective. That neck of the sculpted the head the way they did. So it actually can look like he's sliding down the machete. Oh, that's so gruesome. So that was the alternate head sculpt right here of the original release. Let's put that down for a second. And then of course we'll grab the one for the reissue and very carefully, very carefully, let's go ahead and remove the mask. One of the downsides when you're using the one with the gash on the side of the head is I find like the strap on the side of the mask seems prone to getting stuck in that little canal. But we go ahead and remove that. And we'll again, showing you the difference between the two. It's very, very minor, very minor indeed. But I feel like there's a little bit more bruising on the original release than on the newer release. And again, it's a little bit more precise I find on the paint between the two. This, you may have a tougher time, I feel, deciphering one from the other. Although I think the coloring is probably one thing that could be the telltale sign. You can see with the more reissued head sculpt, it's almost a little bit more, slightly more beige to the coloring of his skin. I'm really hoping that the camera's picking that up. Where if you compare it with the original one, the original one has a lot more browns added to that coloring, that flesh tone could be one of the reasons, one of the ways that you can really pinpoint this one as being the re reissue versus this one right here. And again, it works the exact same way. We can go ahead and grab the machete. Let's make sure we grab the right machete. This was the one that came with the reissue and it works exactly the same way. I don't think that they've changed anything and proved the way that that machete slides into place. I find like it, the machete holds better on the newer one, but I think it's just the fact that I'm trying to find differences between the two. And really, I don't think they've done anything different to the slotted area on the side of his face to actually hold the machete. And again, it works the exact same way. You can actually have the head sliding down as it does in the movie and have a little bit closer of the handle to his eye. And isn't that absolutely gruesome? Very, very cool. Still, for me, I would probably find myself even going one step further and picking up another reissue part for Jason Voorhees, even though I probably already have about five of these now in my collection. Simply then that I could display one Jason Voorhees with the mask, my preferred way, of course, of displaying Jason. But I can't really overlook the fact that NECA Toys would once again include the alternate head sculpt to include with the machete. I could probably find myself picking up another one of the reissues simply just so I could actually have them displayed with the machete lodged into the side of his head here. And for those curious to see what the reissued masks look like side to side, here's a comparison right here. Shape doesn't change too much. I suppose the coloring doesn't change very much either. But you will see though on this one, the chevron color red is still left on them. The chevron here on the side is still fully red. The chevron on the other side has just the point of the red still visible. While this one right here has it now done in gray. The middle triangular chevron in between the two eye sockets as you can see, it doesn't change too much between the two. And the additional wash of color seems a little bit more on this one than on this one right here. This is the one, of course, that you get out of the packaging. This is the one that comes with the gash on the side of the head, just in case you guys want to know the difference between the two. Other than that, I mean, like the masks really aren't that much different from one another. But again, like the material that they used versus the original Jason Voorhees that we've looked at countless times already, there's definitely a much different type of plastic that they've used. It's a little bit more durable, it's a little bit more denser, and it seems to do a better job of keeping the shape intact for the shape of the mask that he has in the movie. So let's get down to the posability on the reissue Jason. I know most of this review was really doing a comparison side to side and showing you the merits of still going out and sourcing out a reissue Jason, because there are enough drastic changes I feel that validate getting another one of these if it means that you get the updated paint job on the mask, the body, of course, the shirt and the pants. 
But let's have a look at the articulation here on Jason. Nothing has changed between this and the original release. So he does have the ball joint. You can move the head up and down, rock back and forth. If you want to have that slight head tilt on Jason, you can pull that off rather effectively. But he does have the ball joint. Just make sure, though, when you are moving the head about, you just want to be careful that you're not applying a lot of pressure and shifting the straps of the mask. That would certainly guarantee that you probably could have these removed from the mask or just damage them in some way. So I, I kind of try to hold them from the ears when I'm doing the articulation. I know I was sort of holding it from the, from the top, but you really want to do your best to hold it from the sides of his ears. So you're not really doing too much damage to those straps. Like with the original release, this is all like molded plastic. The Basically, it's an overlay shirt done in plastic. If you lift it up, nice touch to see, like a little Easter egg. He's got his little belt going on underneath there. Painted as well, because, I mean, really, you wouldn't have seen it anyways. But I appreciate the fact that Nekatoys would have actually painted a surface underneath that, just in case you were, like me, curious and wanted to lift up the shirt. But this is all basically softer plastic. And underneath that is a body that allows his torso to rotate back and forth. So again, like all the construction and the build of this guy is exactly the same as the one that we looked at before. The arms hinge out. A little tighter on this figure, but I don't mind a tight figure joint. It moves up to about a 90, almost like a 45 degree angle bend, not quite a 90 degree angle bend. And I think a lot of it, again, has something to do with the sculpting on the tops of the shoulders. It's just not enough clearance. That's about to the extent, like I said, I can get it. Anything after that, I really don't want to force it. I also want to say too, there's something about this particular uh, head sculpt, the mask that they've decided to sculpt with the reissue. Maybe it is the fact that it's holding its shape a little bit better, but I find it does a better job of just masking those eyes. You still see an indicator of the eyes underneath that, but I find it casts a shadow just a little bit better than the original release. There's a little point I noticed. He does have the bend in the elbow, just a single bend elbow. You can also rotate the forearm back and forth, and you can also rotate the hands all the way around, hinging them also back and forth. For his legs, his legs split out. You know, there's something nice to the fact that I've already had these figures over the years. Probably had, a, like I said, probably two or three of them. But getting a new Jason Voorhees fresh out of the packaging, something that I've already had in my collection for a while, and having like really tight joints on this guy is just a nice, just a nice thing to get. You know, you get this and you have that immediate tight joint where it feels like a nice fresh figure in hand. Just soak it all in. But the legs move forward and back. Um, you can swivel them ever so slightly, by the way, they're pegged into place. Single hinge on the knee. It also allows the lower leg to rotate. And he also has the articulation in the foot, up, down, and back and forth. There is the reissue, Jason. We'll put him down right here. Get his legs all straighten up. And then for one last comparison, get him to stand properly. For one last comparison, we can bring back in the Jason Voorhees that sort of started this a long time ago. Because, of course, we've had a look at this figure countless times already. Let's go ahead and get his mask properly back in place. Here we go. And then putting them next door to one another. Over the comments that I've been getting in the original Jason Voorhees, people have asked me, would you ever consider getting the reissues? And I never really thought that there would be a case where there was such a stark difference between what we got initially than what we got with the reissues. It really goes to show, if you are somebody that doesn't mind going out and buying a same figure again, it really does say, go out there and invest the money to pick up another one of these Jasons, because you can hopefully see, of the course of this review, there are some real considerable positive changes that NECA have made, taking the original core character of Jason Voorhees from part four that we had a look at before, and just vastly improving it simply by adding a new updated coat of paint with the reissue release here. And hey, look, I completely get it. If you already have a Friday the 13th final chapter Jason Voorhees, maybe even more than one of them on your display and you've had them for countless years, it is a bit of a tough sell, the idea of going out, sourcing out the reissue and buying the exact same figure again and again and again. I had that same mindset myself. I had many viewers reaching out to me in my Jason Voorhees reviews saying what I consider getting some of the reissues and that I would really see a stark difference with the newer release Jasons versus the one that we got before. If anyone really championed that more than anyone else, it was viewer Morgan and his son who countless times said to me, you really should consider getting the reissue Jasons as you would see a real noticeable difference with this one versus those older releases. You know what? Morgan was absolutely right. 
Hopefully over the course of this review, I've showed you guys how just improving the paint job, because like the, the bodies and the heads are exactly the same. At least they look exactly the same. Just by improving the paintwork on those, it almost feels like you get a brand new Jason, even though it's really one that we've gotten before. When you compare the two, it only ends up dating the other one that we have in our collection. So I am really glad that I actually took Morgan's advice, decided to get myself a reuse of Jason Voorhees, because this one is probably the best Jason Voorhees I have in my collection right now. And it just goes to show just a little bit of updated paint definitely goes a long way. Unfortunately, it will also mean that I probably already have three part four Jasons already in my collection and now getting this one. Will I see myself getting another reissued Jason Voorhees from Final Chapter simply just so I could display him without the mask? That is a rabbit hole that many collectors end up going down. Before you know it, you're buying the same figure over and over and over again. One thing I would certainly recommend if you are somebody that doesn't see these figures immediately in your stores, let's just say if you live in Canada, for example, where we never get reissued anything really hitting store shelves, I would say check various online sites or if you see a seller that's selling it, make sure that they're putting in brackets reissue or you can also ask them as well. Specifically with the part four, it's the easiest because you can ask, actually ask to see photos of the mask. And the telltale sign of the reissue is that it does have that worn away area done in gray on the mask, which the original one didn't have. It's a little harder to do that with the part six and the part three, which also saw reissues as well. Sometimes you can also, again, go to websites and in the websites clearly indicate it is the reissue because at the end of the day, if you already have this figure in your collection, the last thing you really want to be doing is buying old stock of Jason Voorhees. You want to be getting the reissue with a far superior paint job. Again, a big thank you to viewer Morgan and his son Chase for taking the time and picking up the Friday the 13th final chapter of Jason Voorhees and sending it my way. If you would like to check out some pretty awesome dioramas. Speaking of Jason Voorhees, he does do dioramas for Jason Voorhees. If you'd like to put your character, your figure of Jason in a pretty environmental diorama scene for that particular figure, might I recommend that you head on over to Instagram's uh, the Instagram and check out his account or his site, Macabre Custom Builds. Just look up Macabre Custom Builds. I'll even do one better. I'll provide the link down below in the video description. Have a look at some of the dioramas he's producing and showing images of on his Instagram. You'll be blown away by the work that Morgan's been putting into these dioramas. Also, for your video question for today, if you already have a figure in your collection and you know a new figure has been released with a better paint job, would you consider the idea of getting a reissue if you already have that figure in your collection? Always like reading your comments down below. Certainly, if you're also new to this channel, maybe you come on board and watch this channel specifically for my horror reviews. But let's just say up to this point, you have not subscribed to this channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Make sure you turn on the bell notification and make sure you come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Morgan was lucky enough to pick up, I was lucky enough that Morgan picked up the Friday 13th final chapter Jason Voorhees. But just an FYI, I also managed to find myself source out and pick up a part six and part three reissue, which as you can probably guess, reviews of those will be coming up onto this channel soon enough as well. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.